Hello guys, it's Quinitra, and I just wanted to say tonight, I understand, you know, that it's fine and dandy to, you know, share my life and uh, all of that, and then there's one thing, you know, I feel it's important that God wants me to always go back and forward from is to do this. Um, the way to survive this life, you, I mean, I was thinking in the store, I was just paying my rent, I paid it late because, you know. I didn't have it all, and I just, you know, gained it all today. I want to thank God. It seems like the small things I have to fight for, pray and ask God for help. He comes through. That's how you know. How do you know God is with you? When you have to, when you, when you don't have all your ends and you have to pray to God and you pull on your spiritual bank, so to speak, and you're, and you're pulling on the favor of God. And how do you know that God is with you when you pray and talk to God and you're not just talking to him about things that you need, but you worship him, you adore him, you know, you care about what you do when no one is watching. Um, you are not out here knowing that you can get somebody's number, knowing that you can call somebody tonight and go lay in a bed and be, you know, having hot sex somewhere. Hey, let's keep it real because, you know, one thing I'm not going to do is play no games. You got a lot of pastors who are preaching the word of God. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now preaching the word of God and they got a date tonight with somebody's husband or wife girlfriend escort service something meeting in that hotel room that's giving them the glory to speak to you and be happy because they they got some sexual business to take care of tonight and the next night and the next night and going to a penthouse and doing crazy stuff I done heard all kind of stories so therefore, you know, aiming to please God, going against a stride, righteousness as filthy rags because you're doing what's right, but it's not, it's not that your mind ain't thinking about it, but the word of God says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we're working on it daily, aren't we? So when I say glory to God, that's a hundred percent for my soul. Why? Because I mean it. I mean that thing. And when I spend all, all week long fighting, keeping myself from temptational situations, me really knowing what I go through and what I put myself through and what I come out of, and I know that I know God, and then me having to know that the devil sends people, excuse me, to try to test to see if you know who you are not the fact that you don't and not the fact that you're not a child of God but do you know who you are because if you are a child of God that could very well be so and somebody can talk you away from your own relationship talk you away from your own wife talk you away to quitting your own job when they're the ones that's really persecuting you and you don't have the strength to wait for God to remove them off the job but you run and move somebody can talk you out of your money bully Accuse of the brethren? Yeah. Finding that pillar. Find that strength. The Holy Spirit. Cry out. Repent. 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 I'm talking about getting to a place where even the most people that you've seen every day, someone from your past, this or that, <coughs> getting to a place where you don't even care what they think about you. If it's of God, if what you're doing is right and you know it's of God and you know, like for me, like I said, praying and thanking God for small things. Oh, Lord, God, I want to thank you for another month of paying rent because it seems like no matter what I do, I somehow come up short. Is it God's fault or, uh, or this or that? No, God causes things and you have to go deeper under the skin. <clears throat> you don't know the ways of God all the way. Neither do I, but I look for him daily. And my watch, and my phone, through a song, through a sound, through the wind, through my children, through my car, anything, a shirt, a hat, because he's speaking all the time. And if, if the Bible says count it our joy, I'm going to find joy in this situation if, if I'm short for rent or short for whatever. It, it's building my faith. When I come out of sickness and, and, and uh, come out of sickness and, and bounce out when I went in and come out, it's building my faith. I'm thanking in God, thanking God because I know millions of others or thousands of others have died. And I'm coming into something. And I'm praising God and thanking God 
for pulling me out knowing that there's some kind of favor got to be favor what you think is a coincidence if you survive in 20 to 50,000 people died of coronavirus if you got to survive or you it didn't touch you you think it's just a coincidence no it's not a coincidence it's not a coincidence so thanking God for every insignificant thing. How do I know? I know I'm a blessing to many. Giving out groceries, doing it all unto God. Giving out food, giving out whatever it is, gas. I've, I've given so many people gas from the gas tank, from the gas station, friends, whoever I know. Even if I feel like that person doesn't look at me 100% out of eye, it's unto God. The Bible says you, you will reap burning coals over their head. But do you do things in order to, to be evil? No, you do it unto God. And if someone is ungrateful while you're giving, if they have the fear that they don't want to receive from you anymore, then that's them. Because they can't receive in grudgingness while you're blessing them. But that's them. Let God deal with people. So, giving all glory and honor to God for everything. Seems like I gotta fight my way. I heard what Nina Bonham said before, cause she gotta fight away for everything. Seems like she gotta press so hard to get to this or that. It's, just, it's the anointing and the devil is testing everything you do to see if you're gonna get frustrated, see if you're gonna pray, see if you're gonna give up, see if you're gonna give in to that man that will have sex with you, see if you're gonna do that drug, see if you're gonna hit that person, see if you're gonna stab, even go to the point of kill, even cause somebody to be suicide, depressed and kill themselves, seeing what you're gonna do. Seeing if you're a child of God, see if you're gonna stick with God, see if you're gonna abandon God, and then see if you're gonna do somewhere God is going to abandon you because time is short. Time is short. I guarantee you one thing. Hell is real. The spiritual realm is real. The only way to survive this walk is to pray for discernment. Pray for the Holy Spirit. Keep your word close to you. You better not uh, see it as religious. You better not see it as religious because you better start reading before they take Bibles away. I'm telling you, as the years go by, 18 years, do you think it's going to be the same? I got a question. Do you think? The years going forward, if you really feel like we're nearing or in the end time, do you think it's going to be the same? Are we going to have all this food, all this splurge? No. Food is about to climb. I keep seeing in the spirit. Food is about to get expensive. It may not be right now two, three, four, five years, but where are you going to be at 10, 15 years? You're still going to be living. I guarantee you everybody will have their place and get what is just. God is a just God and he judges every heart and every case accordingly to what they deserve of their, their deeds. So if a person is gossiping, tormenting you, doing this and doing that, and they, for some reason, you found that they didn't pass away from a coronavirus or whatever or this or that. I had a lady, what I'm trying to say, for instance, a real life story. Somebody was persecuting me and my second husband when we first got married. Oh my gosh, everybody thought that I took their husband from them. He was supposed to marry me, but he's with her. And I had this one lady, anywhere that I would go, she would gossip and do this and do that. All I'm trying to say is, why would you waste your time gossiping? That's why I talk about it so much because I had a lady pass away. Focusing her attention and gossiping about me and my husband. And Molly, Molly for me because she was jealous and mad. And everybody was pinpointing their target. I didn't even know who this lady was personally. She was in the church. Every time she see me snarl, whatever, whatever. Do you know that I found out that uh, a little bit after that, that she was persecuting and torment, tormenting me like that, and she passed away of a heart attack. What I'm trying to tell you is, there's a lot of people out here. Don't fake and shake and be. This is a prophetic ministry. What? Sometimes I feel like my soul gets so excited that I can't even get out what I'm trying to say to you. For people who think they know God, oh, you going to church? You quoting scriptures? Okay, okay. If you gossiping. And you can't feel the seasons? I couldn't even live this walk if I couldn't feel the seasons. Quinitra Lewis, I can sense. I sense when God said it was ready to move from Jack in the Box. I sense when he said, stay. You move too soon. Go back to Jack in the Box. That was that shortstop. Everybody seen it. Go back and see my videos. I had a shortstop shirt on. I went back to Jack in the Box. I quit shortstop. Went back because the money wasn't right at shortstop. Then God say, stay at Jack in the Box. You move too soon. Then my pastor confirmed and said, you move too soon. Then I heard God say, okay, at the end of this month, I'm going to move you. And then when I went shopping one day at Rainbow in my city, so I was outside the door that I work at now, and he would say, hey, won't you come apply here? And I said, how much is it? He said, $15 an hour. Went inside, did my drug test and everything, and application, and got hired. If you don't know your seasons, if you can't sense the devil standing over your bed or a demon or something, you better not 
open your mouth to gossip and start trouble before the eyes of God. Tomorrow, you could die in a car wreck. You could have a heart attack. Somebody could shoot you. You could get locked up for 10, 15 years for that sin that you keep doing, stealing. For those pastors who keep sleeping with other people, this and that. Wake up with HIV or something. You better check your spiritual life and quit focusing on other people. Check yourself. That woman of God, I guarantee you she wasn't expecting to pass away. She was not expecting to pass away. But she spent the rest of her time worried about me for the wrong reasons. I'm telling you guys, God told me to get on YouTube to explain my life. I didn't went through so many things. I got nothing but time to open up my life to you so you could learn not to laugh at me, not to take it and exploit it, not to hate me, not to gossip or pinpoint or find something about me. And for the ones who do it, I give them to God. I am here and I am a offering so people can eat off of. I am a fruit. I am a fruit. That's all that I am. I am nothing without the Spirit of God. The way you survive this walk with God is to pray for the Holy Spirit, to repent, love your enemies, be a blessing, let your hands be fruitful. Don't hold no grudges. Forgive so God can forgive you. Work on your sin. Ask God to deliver you. Ask Him for the Holy Spirit. Continue every day to be pure, whole, holy, and dignified and righteous. Pray to be rapture ready. Pray to follow the, uh, to be a one who can hold the line to, to follow the Ten Commandments. Love on your children. <clears throat> Learn how to please God. Aim at it. No matter how much you get attacked, yeah, the devil going to attack you. He don't want nobody close to God because he ain't close to God no more. He want to be your God. He want to take you out. He wants you burning the lake of fire forever. This is a cutthroat fight. And real, people don't realize, many don't, that we are in a fight for a soul. That's why many are passing away and can't come back to this side. You guys be blessed tonight. I'm off tomorrow. Man, I'm going to fix me some uh, popcorn joes, popcorn shrimp, and some catfish, and some fried rice and soy sauce. And I'm just going to glorify God tonight while I'm off. You guys be blessed. Please listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. This is not about me. I don't care how imperfect I am. Someone's going to always find an art. I could always find an art with somebody. That's our problem. We keep going and going and going in our flesh. We hurt people. We make people depressed. We hurt people with our words and our thoughts and our mind. We, we hurt God the most. Because we think we got it all figured out. And guess what? There's some people who don't even think they got it all figured out. But they know one thing and they got their mind made up. They don't want God in their life. They don't want God in it. <coughs> because <coughs> the things that they go for, God don't like. And it doesn't tickle their fancy. God doesn't agree. He can't partner. He can't partner with drinking and smoking weed and having sex and stripping it, popping it and dropping it like it's hot in threesomes. And, and, and pornography with, and masturbation. But he can partner to clean you. Partner to fix you up. Partner to hear you say, I repent. I want to turn around and I want to surrender my life. I, I realize I messed that up. Why did I have to sleep with all these people and I end up catching that HIV for me to cry out to you? God will use any circumstance or situation to get to you. Because it's way much better for you to suffer in hell for eternity. He will use by any means <coughs> for the ones that are his. That he know. Google that. He, he'd come for the ones that are his. There are vessels of mercy, <coughs> excuse me, there are vessels of mercy and vessels of destruction. Think upon this, ponder upon it, strip your life and your mind until you see that God is not a religious factor, until you see that God is the most dire thing that you ever need in your whole life. Keep stripping it away until you realize God is the most important thing that you need in your life. No matter how much you don't agree with him. No matter if it caused you to sit on your, your couch flipping the channels every night, you can't go out to the club. I guarantee you, if you looked up and five people got in the car wreck and you heard about it and you, and you knew you were supposed to go to that club that night and God saved you, you better start being grateful instead of complaining and, and complaining and murmuring. You guys be blessed.